So that thermal equilibrium really is a dynamic equilibrium because heat really is moving back and forth between the two water containers. And just like with my thumb, if I died, the heat in my body would be lost to the environment. And we'd reach a point where my body temperature was the same as that of the environment. The environment actually would increase in temperature a tiny bit, but it's huge, so you can't really notice that part. And that would, my body would come to thermal equilibrium. I would cool off until I was the temperature of my environment. So we can talk about various types of things where we can uh, assign the equilibrium word or, or, or something like it. Uh, one of them is a static equilibrium, and a static equilibrium not only does nothing change, the states stay the same, um, but in fact, nothing is changing, nothing is happening. You got two rocks sitting next to each other. They're, they're absolutely stable, nothing's happening. What we've been looking at so far, however, are dynamic equilibria and steady states. The difference between a dynamic equilibrium and a steady state has to do with whether or not energy is required to maintain the system. So in a dynamic equilibrium, what you've got is a system that, that is something that's constantly happening. The different chemicals are constantly being shifted from the, sub, the reactants to the products and back to the uh, products. But overall, within the system, there's no change. So the concentration of the reactants and the concentration of the products is remaining, uh, remaining the same, despite the fact that reactants are constantly converted into products and, and, and back again. Now, a steady state. A steady state is a system where you've got things happening and you're not getting any change, but it requires energy to maintain the system at that, in that way. And that's the example with my thumb, where you've got this heat gradient, this thermal gradient, and it's not changing. So it's like an equilibrium. In fact, heat's constantly being given off from me, so it's kind of like a dynamic equilibrium. But it isn't really a, an equilibrium. It's a steady state, because the only way that system's staying that way is because energy's constantly being put into my thumb, the heat from my body, which is then being lost. Mowing one's lawn. Presumably, I thought of this while I was mowing my lawn. So, Lawns want to grow, and we, for some reason, want to keep our lawns from growing. And so we're out there with our mowers cutting back our lawns. And as a consequence of that, our lawns are maintained at some relatively constant height. Okay? That height represents a steady state. In this case, the energy required to maintain the steady state is the energy we're putting into mowing. If we stop putting it into mowing, then the system moves to its essentially stable point, which is with the grass as high as the grass wants to be. Now, it's more complicated than that because grass requires energy to grow, but we're ignoring that part of it. And a lot of biology is you look at one aspect of it, and you're not necessarily looking at all aspects of it. So in this case, we're looking at the height of the grass and not really asking how it is that the grass becomes high. But the grass has a propensity to grow, and we don't want it to grow. We want to maintain it at some relatively short height, so we're constantly out there mowing. And so that represents a steady state. Something's happening. The, the grass is constantly growing, and we're out there mowing. But ideally, so as far as we're concerned, the system is staying the same. The grass is being maintained at a, something close to a constant height. When we're heating our house, or for that matter, cooling our house, but this is with heat as an example. So we've got a furnace, and the furnace heats the house, and we've got it set up so we have feedback, negative feedback going on. When the house gets high enough, so we've got the furnace on, we get a gain in heat, the temperature of the house goes up, that's supposed to be a thermometer. When it gets hot enough, the furnace turns off, and the heat moves out of the house, goes through cracks, it radiates from the house. It's impossible to keep the heat in the house forever. So the temperature goes down and we have a thermostat and that thermostat says, oh, the temperature's going down and turns the furnace back on again. So we are maintaining our house at more or less the same temperature, 
But it's not a dynamic equilibrium because, in fact, it takes an input of energy to do this. And here it's quite obvious what that input of energy is, right? We're either burning electricity or we're burning natural gas or we're burning oil or burning coal or burning wood. Lots of burning going on. And that burning is really converting, actually, something that we can call potential energy into heat energy to keep our house warm.